Well, today's video, as we promised yesterday, is going to be the York JCB 861. We covered the 867 yesterday, we covered the 869 base station the day before, and last week we covered the 863. So that's all four of the York products we will have covered. This is coming uh, in a batch of stuff that probably came off eBay, and it's got a red sticker in the back, which means that one of our members of staff has gone through it, and it doesn't work. So the first thing we're going to do is, uh, this is a set we've bought in to sell on for profit. And so, of course, it depends what's wrong with it as to whether we'll be successful in doing that. What it has come with is the factory original microphone and a dangling off plug. So what we'll do is replace that plug because the um, cable grip thing's missing. And we will get a power lead to that. And I'll get that done, and I'll be back with you in a moment. Right back to the York 861. Now I've taken the lids off. It looks in lovely condition inside. I'll put a nice new mic plug on, and we'll switch on the bench power supply. And we'll switch on the radio with its crackly volume control, which I'll deal with later. And... does in fact transmit. First of all we'll do the VCO. Test point one is the far side of resistor four as it always is on the Cybernet 134 chassis. And the thing you can say about the York 861 is it's a reliable set. And you know, yeah, it's the same as the Harrier CB, isn't it? It's the same as the Rotel 220. But they're just such a reliable set. So that's the test point. On the far side of resistor 4. Resistor 4 being the end resistor there. So I'm on there. I need to be on channel 40. And I should have, on receive, somewhere around about 4 volts. Well, I've got 3.66 volts. In transmit, I should also have something around 4 volts. I've got 4.4 volts. I think I'll just adjust it on receive. And now I'll zoom out and hopefully you'll see the meter says 4.1. So now I'm going to just select channel 40. Sorry, I'm on 40. Select 1. I should have something on receive on channel 1, somewhere around about 2 volts. And I have got 2.09 toggling 1. And on transmit, I should have somewhere around about 1.8 volts. And I've got 2.8 volts. And that's also fine, it's in lock. So, you, you, don't, you don't need to panic about these voltages. If it was 0 0.02 volts, it would be wrong. If, you know, if it was 7 volts, it would be wrong. But, it, you know, that's what it reads, and that's fine. So never panic about accuracy on those lock voltages because it differs from the instruments you're using. I'm sure if I put R808 on it, it would read very different. Right, so I've checked the VCO. We know the radio is transmitting. And now we'll go for the tune-up procedure. Like any other Cybernet 134. So what's it doing at the moment? Well, for a start, I'd better put channel 20 on. Right, well, it's doing, I'll tell you how many watts it's doing, it's doing spot on three watts. So, usually these are capable of four. So, we'll go with the tune-up procedure. First one, is that one there. So, 
And the second one is that one there. And the third one is Transformer 4, back there. My chart says that when Transformer 6 is fitted, that's Transmit. But I'm not sure, so don't take my gospel on that. I'd have to uh, look it up in the manual for you. So we're still at 3 watts. We haven't made any improvement whatsoever. And now we're going to move over to L4. And that's using my the green hexagonal plastic tool that I have. Now I've got 4.2 watts. Then we're on L8. Now L8 is important it's balanced on channel 20 because if you get that wrong you can end up with 1 watt on channel 1 and 7 watts on channel 40 and uh, it's all lopsided. So we've made sure that's right. That's now reading uh, 4.1 watts. And then the final one sets the power. And I'm going to set it to full to then turn it back down again. And it's just achieved 4.6 watts. And I've now turned it down to the 4. Okay. So that's brought that back to normal operation. Now we need to check that the meter, the transmit meter, also reads 4. It reads 5 and a bit. So we need to adjust that. TX meter adjustment. is RV4. That's now set for the 4 watts on the meter. Now then, high power, low power. That's in the high power mode. In low power it should be doing 0 0.4 of a watt. It's actually doing nothing whatsoever. It can be quite common in this chassis for the low power preset to be dirty. And it's RV5 at the back there. So I've just used the service sole switch cleaner, readily available. I'll just waggle that around and clean it up. If these have been used in a smoking environment, it just plays havoc with the preset. So you never know, do you? Especially now they're 30 years old. Okay, well now we're getting a reading. And that is 0.4 of a watt. So I'll switch back to high power. Excellent. Check the radios on frequency. It should be 27 decimal 79125 on channel 20. And we have 27 decimal 79126. So it is spot on. However, if that wasn't so, we'd adjust the um, variable capacitor, the preset variable capacitor next to the 10.24 oscillator crystal there. We'd adjust that until we had the correct frequency. But it's spot on, and on this occasion, we don't need to touch it. We now know that we want to transmit an audio deviation. I'll switch the other camera on, which hopefully is sat there waiting for us. And where are we? We'll switch the oscillator on. And what we have, it's supposed to be 2.5 deviation as a maximum. And what we actually have is 1.7. The deviation control is RV2. That shows signs of being dirty as well. Just clean that one. Waggle it around. A 
and now we have 2.5. Switch off the oscillator and just check with the whistle test. Just fractionally over the top there. So I'll just turn it back a fraction. And then the wallow. That's excellent. That's done. When you do it, if you're doing these in a factory environment, you wouldn't be whistling and doing things like that. You'd actually have a, an audio signal generator straight into the microphone plug, and you'd do it that way around. So you'd have a your signal generator straight in there with a switch box somewhere, and every set would receive exactly the same uh, signal. It's normally going to be four millivolts at one kilohertz. So that's just a point for those of you setting up uh, RF test benches. You may well want to buy an audio signal generator, and it's four millivolts. And it's uh, but obviously it differs from service manual to service manual for what set you're dealing with, but normally they tend to be four millivolts, and it's always one kilohertz. Um, this is in a factory original microphone, and it works. I'm just going to listen on our monitor receiver because sometimes when it's an elderly microphone like that, the microphone lead could be faulty. Testing one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. And that's absolutely fine. No rattle there. That's it. So I'll stop the video and we'll do another one for the receive section of the York JCB 861.